Hello, I'm Joy Lawrence. Welcome to my Richard Wright biography. The sources I used, the History Channel, which is history.com, Modern American Poetry. Again, here's the website. I highly recommend that you use this if you find it useful for your final presentation at the end of the class. Black Boy by Richard Wright, Tulsa Race Riot, Conversations with Richard Wright, an article from the New York Times called For Action on Race Riot Peril. Richard Wright was born in 1908 and died in 1960. He was born on a plantation near Natchez, Mississippi on September 4th, 1908. His mother was an educated school teacher. His father was a sharecropper. His father deserted the family when he was a young boy for another woman. And his mother was left to take care of Richard and his other brother. He was sent to an orphanage in 1914 because the mother knew that at least there, he and his brother would be able to eat and get sufficient meals. This was really devastating for him because he missed his mother. She did come and visit them every day until the woman who ran the orphanage told her that she was hurting them by coming too much. Later, when he was reunited with his mother, when she was cooking for a cafe, he would go when she was reaching the end of her shift because he knew that he could eat the food that was left by the white customers, the leftovers. And this was something that he didn't understand as a young child and then later as an adult. How is it that some people could have enough and others had more than enough and others had not enough at all? He didn't understand any of that. Richard Wright and his mother and his brother moved to Arkansas to live with his, his mother's sister and her husband, Silas. While they were there, um, Silas, who owned a lucrative bar on the black side of town, was murdered by some white men who wanted to take over his bar. The family, Richard and his mother and his brother, were afraid that those men were going to come back and murder them as well, so they moved back to Mississippi where the KKK was reaching its height. The 1870s through the 1960s in our country is when we had segregation, and I know that you have learned a lot about this in history classes and that you have seen iconic photos like this one. I want to point out that this is the America that Richard Wright is growing up in. 1919 was dubbed the Red Summer because so many race riots happened across the country and so much blood was spilled, most of it African American, that it was dubbed the Red Summer. Now Richard Wright didn't get involved in any of these race riots, but this is again the America in which he is growing up. A little bit of background again, some cultural context for what he is experiencing growing up. Richard Wright um, is, is growing up in an America where it is very difficult for African Americans. In Greenwood, Oklahoma, they had a very successful, fully African American community. They had everything in that city that you would find in any other lucrative city. Doctors, lawyers, banks, movie theater, stores, and the problem that happened was one day a young man got on an elevator that was run by this elevator operator, a young white woman. She tripped and fell, and this young African-American man threw his hands out instinctively to catch her, and she screams and runs away, and she is she tells people that he has tried to rape her. Now, he is put in jail, and then the next day, there's this news article calling for men to go down to the courthouse to get him so that they can kill him. Some men from Greenwood were afraid that this is exactly what was, what was going to happen. So 75 men went to the courthouse and where they found 2,000 white men gathering outside the courthouse demanding for this young man to be released. Some shots were fired, some white men were hit, and then in retribution they went through Greenwood and totally destroyed it. And these are pictures of the aftermath. So going back, this is the city, how it looked beforehand. And this is the destruction 
after they ravaged the city. When the National Guard finally took order, there were 150 people dead, 1,200 homes and businesses had been burned, and there was $1.5 million in damages. The devastation was so thorough that they could not rebuild the city. Again, Richard Wright did not live here, but this is the American in, America in which he is growing up. And so one of the things that you have to do for your literary analysis this time is new historicism. So I wanted to give you some cultural context, some background of what was going on in the America that Richard Wright is growing up in. Now going back to Richard Wright, his mother suffered a stroke, so he went to live with an aunt and uncle. He did not have a good time there. His cousin, their son, had died in the bedroom in the bed that Richard Wright was sleeping in, and this really disturbed him. He kept asking if he could maybe sleep on the sofa or in the, somewhere else on the floor, perhaps, but they thought he was being ungrateful. Then he went to live with his grandmother from 1920 to 1925. She was a strict religious woman who would only let him read religious texts. However, she was illiterate, so he would come home with whatever books he wanted to read, make up a story about them being religious texts, and that was how he got away with reading whatever he wanted. He started his first formal education in fifth grade and graduated from ninth grade as class valedictorian. So he was a very quick learner. Also, he did get some education at home. Remember, his mother was an educated school teacher. When he graduated, there was some controversy as to whether or not he would get to deliver his own speech. Richard Wright was already known as someone who was passionate about things and unafraid to speak his voice. The principal said he was going to write a speech that Richard Wright would then deliver. Richard Wright said, I don't think so. And the principal said, then you will not graduate. After all was said and done though, Richard Wright was able to give his speech, uh, the one that he wrote and graduate. In 1941, he married Ellen Poplar. And when he, and in 1942, their first daughter, Julia was born. In 1946, he went to France as a visiting writer, and there he was treated with the respect that he deserved as the writer that he was. And when he went back to the United States, he remembered all of the things that he disliked about living here. Being called boy by shopkeepers, not being able to rent apartments where he wanted to because he was black, being stared at on the streets because his wife was white. So he and his family decided to move back to France and they settled permanently in Paris in 1947. In 1949, their second daughter, Rachel, was born. Richard Wright died when he was 52 years old of amoebic dysentery, which is very unpleasant and painful. He, there are rumors that he was murdered. Those have never been substantiated, but it's interesting, so I, so I share it with you. A final quote from Richard Wright, writing is my way of being a free man. I hope that I've given you some information that you find useful when reading Big Black Good Man and writing your literary analysis. Thanks for watching. See you next time.